Welcome back to SFHS Today. I'm Sam Glavinsky. And I'm Jake Hansen. In national news, last week the Boy Scouts of America unanimously approved to welcome girls into its Cub Scout program and to deliver a scouting program for older girls that will enable them to advance and earn the highest rank of Eagle Scout according to a press release from the organization. In a New York Times article, Lisa Margosian, Chief Customer Officer for the Girl Scouts said, we've had 105 years of supporting girls and a girl only safe space she added that the organization felt blindsided by the announcement. In school news, this is a short week with a late start on Wednesday and no school on Thursday and Friday. While teachers across the state attend, the Minnesota Educator Academy hosted by the Teachers Union Education Minnesota. In other news, SFHS Media has been doing a series of reports on the bond issue. That will be voted on November 7th. This week, reporters Katie Bjork and Maddie Winkles went out to find the impact on the elementary schools in the district. I, th I think the most important thing for us at St. Francis Elementary School is that our fourth and fifth grade students will join our kindergarten through third grade students uh, back at this building with the addition of uh, 10 classrooms. Um, it's been a long time now where those fourth and fifth grade students have been housed at the middle school and it really by bringing them back here, it'll bring back a sense of community, not only with our students, but their staff uh, and our families as well. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're looking at enhancing our security uh, to enter the building, which is, is a definite need as well. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, creating some additional spaces, some working spaces uh, for STEM opportunities, uh, updating our media center, those types of things to really bring it into the more of a future setting. Uh, the addition would be a 10 classroom addition uh, as well as, as restrooms off of the northeast side of the building. Currently it's a parking lot or a kickball field, um, but that's where the majority of the addition would be. Uh, in addition to the anything else inside would, would be existing spaces just maybe uh, revamped to better fit our needs. I really the biggest thing is, is bringing back the sense of community uh, you know, having the opportunity to have our fifth graders work with kindergartners and not having to walk across a parking lot to do that, I think is very important. Um, you know, fourth graders, you know, also being part of our elementary process here uh, at, at the St. Francis Elementary School South Campus is very important. Uh, and I know the staff are really, really excited for the opportunity to, to all be under one roof again. Uh, Thanks for the information, SFHS Today. We'll have more information leading up to the vote. Last week, the SFHS media team attended the Minnesota High School Press Association State Convention and were proud to announce SFHS Today received Best of Show. Andrew Gilbert and Spencer Baldwin report on the State Convention. Spencer and I, along with other SFHS Today media staff, went to the Minnesota State Journalism Convention at the University of Minnesota October 10, 2017, where we were greeted with an amazing opening welcoming speech by their main keynote speaker. But Peter Lynn Hayes said, okay, let's see what we have. So she punched the playback button, and you know what she got? Not Peter Lynn Hayes and Mary Healy. She had Alvin and the Chipmunks because it was on the wrong speed. She came back to the journalism building and said, oh, this is not good. Uh, when I was in college, I thought I wanted to be a foreign correspondent. And my, my mother said, no, you shouldn't be a foreign correspondent. You should be a teacher. So I began teaching in the late 60s. So I've been doing it for a really, really long time. Um, and I love it. It's, it's, um, my mom was right. It's the best possible job for somebody like me. Spencer and I then headed upstairs where the other sessions were taking place so we could learn more about journalism. In journalism, you just don't write one thing and say, I'm done with it. You revise it and revise it and revise it. And 
our, our advisory makers rewrite things many, many times. So I was expecting to learn a lot about journalism. Like I've done in the past years, I've learned a lot about journalism in terms of where to look for stories and what types of things to report on and how. I guess kind of the same thing as her because we did everything together. But also like last year, um, it was really cool to just see like the other schools and see like we don't really get a lot of chances to see like outside of our school how other publications work and um, there are a lot there's like a lot that you can learn from just looking at other schools and what they do. Otherwise, it was a fun experience and we learned a lot. Back to you. In other news, youth teaching youth applications were due last week. Emily Nuremberger spoke with. School nurse Holly Coy to get more information. So Youth Teaching Youth is a program that allows high school students to go in and teach either elementary school or middle school students about different topics. I like being kind of their role model, like being the person that they look up to, they can come to for any questions or concerns about their peers. Um, I liked how I got to like be a leader. You got to get to know the kids and they looked up to you. I try to be a good example. It means that I could kind of like help them shape their lives and kind of just help them become the person that they want to be. The, tr the training um, for Youth Teaching Youth takes place usually in October. It's a full day training. Um, based on the questions that the kids asked, it kind of made me look at life in a different point of view. It's one day per month where individual teaching teams go to the middle school for about an hour increments to teach individual classrooms. Um, it meant a lot knowing that little kids like to learn from us and see us as role models. So things they said kind of changed my perspective on how the little kids think and it's different from what we think but it's good to know what they feel and how they view things. Thanks for the information. Students and youth teaching youth really make a difference in our community. Others who are trying to show support in the community at SFHS are a group of friends and members of the football team who stood beside their friend and teammate, Luke Bonte, who was diagnosed with cancer at the beginning of the season. As chemo claimed Bonte's hair, a large group of young men went out and shaved their heads to show support. There was like 75 people who got their hair cut there and we shaped our heads for Luke because he lost all his hair and we wanted to support him and be there for him. Uh, I shaved my head because it shows then that he's not the only one going through it. And yeah, love the kid to death. Yeah, uh, it took a long time. A lot of people were getting their hair buzzed, so about two hours maybe. Like everyone was there the whole event. Yeah, uh, I've been friends with Luke since like kindergarten. Uh, he used to be my wrestling partner when we were the same size and I shave my head because I just want to show him he's not alone. Yeah, there's, there was kids that don't even know Luke that his mom didn't even know they were there. I've known Luke since elementary school and I shave my head just because like it's Bonte, we have to. <laughs> so he already lost all his hair and he had it shaved off and um, everyone else did it to support him and be there for him, being good friends. Everyone was kind of scared for it. No one was really ready. But then we seen all of our friends do it, and we all looked pretty ugly, so might as well. Um, we go and visit him from time to time. We talk to him, stay in touch with him, and he'll come to the football games on Friday nights to support us and our team. I've had probably like 10 people touch my head already and stuff and just feel it and stuff. I don't know. I didn't think it was going to be as bad as I thought it would be. Like, I thought it was going to look really bad, but once I looked in the mirror, I... I don't know. I just kind of brushed it off, I guess, because it's for a friend and we're supporting him, so it shouldn't really matter how we look. It's not just students who support each other. Cammie Ferguson and Bobby Earrett went in search of a teacher at her school who is continuing to build the photography and graphic arts program and sharing her professional skills with students. She is this week's teacher feature. I taught at a high school right before here, and before that I taught at Brown College for almost 20 years. What do you love most about photography and graphic design? I like that it communicates a message. It brings, uh, it can evoke an emotion, it can evoke a memory, um, but, it, but it mainly just communicates. Do you have a favorite place you've been to while on the job? I would say for photography, one of my favorite places is Como Zoo, because you can get right up close to the animals. And I like Stone Arch Bridge, I like down to Minneapolis a lot. Just really anything off 
the beaten path. What made you want to come to St. Francis High School in particular compared to other schools? The one thing they offered here um, that really enticed me was that it was all digital art. So it means I could just concentrate on photography, graphic design, which in other schools um, there was maybe one art teacher and they just taught everything, which is fine. Um, but having that opportunity to just build a digital program and have it strictly be digital was really enticing for me. How long have you been a photographer? I actually went to college for graphic design. So I've been a graphic designer for years and years and years. And then part of graphic, the graphic design program was photography classes, so I've always done photography on the side. I've done it for quite a while. It's, it's been a long time for both. This Saturday, the SFHS Drumline has a show at the U.S. Bank Stadium with other drumlines from all over the state. Helping to lead Drumline is Elliot, and he is our five minutes of fame this week. Student celebrities everywhere, this is why you should care about five minutes of fame. He's the leader in our classroom with our wind ensemble and with our drum line. I am center snare, which means I tap off the majority of the cadences and I'm technically section here of the snare. It's a great attitude and he has great tap offs at certain songs. Those of you that were at the Pep Fest last Friday uh, during the morning, you saw him leading a group of students out in front of the entire student body. That takes a lot of bravery and skill. I like being with my friends and doing, I enjoy drumming as well. So then doing it with friends is just a added positive. He works hard, he practices hard. His peers look up to him. He's a very responsible young man and we're glad to have him a part of our school and a part of our music program. That's all we have for you this week, Saints. Now stay tuned for weather, RQT, and sports. Hey Saints, welcome back. I'm Paige with weather. Today will be mostly sunny with a high of 62 and a low of 46. Tuesday will be also sunny with a high of 66 and a low of 46. On Wednesday, you may see some rain with a high of 66 and a low of 50. Then on Thursday, it will be cloudy with a chance of rain with a high of 66 and a low of 54. Change in weather on Friday, it will be very sunny with a high of 71 and a low of 56. Getting to the weekend, Saturday will be sunny with a high of 71 and a low of 52. Finally, Sunday will be cloudy and cold with a, with a good chance of rain with a high of 59 and a low of 54. Now let's toss it over to sports. What's up, Saints? I'm Montana Levi, and this is sports. Welcome to a short week for sports as many of the fall sports wrap up their seasons. The girls volleyball team had a home game last week against Big Lake. They won three games to zero on Tuesday. The next varsity match is tomorrow night at 7 when the Saints travel to Rogers to take on the Royals. They head into sections next week. In soccer news, the boys team had a section game Tuesday against Coon Rapids losing 3-4. to four. The boys had one of the best seasons in the past decade. Tanner Kuncher spoke to some of the players about this season. Yeah, it's been a really good season so far. We uh, finished 11-4-2, and, and uh, a lot of underclassmen have stepped it up. It's been good. I think we've had a pretty good season overall. Um, we started off pretty much win one, lose one, but after that we really just strung together a bunch of wins. Yeah, uh, this, this past year uh, we did a lot of training in the summer, and uh, okay. we hit the weight room, so yeah. we'd be prepared. San Francisco weight room. What do you see the future of San Francisco soccer? Um, yeah, it looks real good. We got yeah. a lot of seniors this year and a lot of upcoming seniors too. Yeah, so yeah. next year should be good. The girls team had a section game last week. They lost to Blaine 7-1 to last Tuesday and in their seasons as well. Last Tuesday, cross country had a meet at Princeton. The boys varsity team placed fifth overall and the girls team placed third overall. Tomorrow is their conference meet at Bertram Regional Park in Monticello. Last Tuesday, girls tennis played individual sections in Duluth and junior Marlis Green made it all the way to the final round, losing her last game to end of the season. The second doubles team of Sammy Johnson and Emma Arnold lost 1-6 and 3-6 in their first game, also ending one of the most successful girls tennis team seasons of on record. Dance had a setback last weekend when they were told after their boy-girl dance at last week's Pep Fest that they had to eliminate their throw from their Saturday dance show. SFHS Media spoke with some of the girls about the situation. It was the day before our dance show that a whole bunch of schools were coming to, and we didn't have time to change it, and we didn't have anything else choreographed for it. Um, well, we did it at the Pep Fest that day, 
And then the next day we had a show, so we kind of had to change everything right before that show to perform it. Otherwise they told us we weren't able to perform it, so. Yeah, and it was super stressful the next day to get the message out to all the guys that they needed to show up early to the show so we could fix it. It was kind of hard uh, trying to fix the next performance the next day. So we had to practice like 10 minutes before we got there. Um, there was a big throw with Mitchell Wilson and he got launched. Nancy came up to me, the community ed advisor, and told me that as soon as she heard all the teachers like gasp, she knew like, oh my goodness, what just happened? I mean, I trusted all the people catching me basically. I mean, we had like 12 people catching me. Uh, a lot of good feedback. A lot of people came up to me and told me that they really enjoyed it. Um, I had a few teachers say that it was like the best one they've ever seen. Um, everyone said it was pretty cool. People said I got high up in the air. They said I got like 15 feet. It's kind of weird being up there, but... We threw Tanner Kuncher last year, the year before. It was the same exact throw, and they didn't have an issue with it last year, so I don't really know what changed this year. Finally, football took their field on Friday the 13th to face Cambridge in the battle for the paddle. Unfortunately, and the 13th wasn't, was unlucky for the Saints as they lost the paddle to Cambridge. Off the field, the boys varsity team has been reaching out to the younger students in ISD 15 by going out and reading at the different elementary schools in the district. We spoke with some of the coaches and the players about this outreach. Reading to elementary students is something that other teams have done in the past. It's something that we've talked about as a football staff. Uh, it was really nice seeing all the little kids like be happy about seeing us, like bigger kids, I guess, come in. And, uh, read to them, like they were really excited, you could tell, like by the second we walked into the school they were all like jumping up and down and like wowing and woeing. Uh, I thought they were pretty excited when we walked in the classroom, they all closed their books right away and when we sat down in front they all ran to the rug and sat down. The coolest thing I saw was it didn't matter who it was, they all came back with these huge smiles on their faces, everyone had a blast and all of the players did a great job reading. The team takes on the Huskies Wednesday at Andover before heading into their finals play next week. It's the random question thing, ding. If I could ask any random question thing, it would be what's your favorite dance move? A front aerial. Yeah! Mm. What would you set your thermostat at? What about the opposite sex confuses you the most? What's the most expensive thing you've broken? <laughs> What book do you wish can be turned into a movie? <laughs> what looks delicious but tastes nasty? Dogs or cats? Are you single or taken? What's the funniest thing to fill a pinata with? What song would you pay to never hear again? Where's the best place for students to come for college and career questions? What's the last thing you ate? Uh, do you like snowy days or rainy days? Have a great short week, Saints.